we're so happy to see you. And always to our internet church, uh, we're thankful for you. And we do have quite a group listening from here to there in many places. And um, uh, someone was telling me, oh, um, I had a long distance call today. And uh, Brother Pete Johnson was telling me that he said he went back to the lesson of um, the first lesson we had in August, which would have been last Monday, I guess. Yes, yeah. last Monday was the first, wasn't it? So uh, last Monday's lesson, uh, he said, Brother Marlow, I just so enjoyed that. And that was really for me. I really needed that lesson that you all had in the Monday night Bible study. He said, I really needed it. I just, and I, I turned it on and received it, and it was such a blessing. So we want to pray tonight for um, all of God's people. And Pete Johnson, he requested prayer. Brother George McCann called. He's in Little Rock with his wife, Betty, and uh, she's um, unable to really converse with him too much, but he's there with her. Um, and uh, so we want to pray for Brother George and Betty McCann. Uh, he's 90 or 91. He's the most decorated soldier living in the United States now in the Second World War. How's he doing here? Uh, he's much better. I can understand him now very well on the phone. It's marvelous how his voice is cleared up. Wow, and um, he really sounds like Brother McCann now. Uh, and so we're thankful for that. But we want to pray for them and ask God to help them. Then we want to pray for uh, Sister Patricia Ware. Uh, did, you, did you bring that? Did you find a place? There? Yeah, they were they were home. We delivered it. Good. Yeah. Thank you, Brother Butch. He's, He's wearing part of it. I'm yeah. wearing part of it. it if you get so hungry, hungry it's it's smell chicken broth, it's me. <laughs> Well, you got it there, though. You got it there. Got it there. And so, <laughs> your puppy will be glad of that smell. She's sitting here whining. <laughs> <laughs> She's hungry. They always enjoy that. Uh, so I'm, I'm very thankful you took that to Patricia. And her son was probably there, Julius. Julius and uh, I've been there not long ago with them and talked to them. The, the service will be here at the church, uh, the, the details, the final arrangements have not been made, but they're in the process of making them, but uh, Brother Leroy's service will be here at the church. So we're thankful for that. And because we love the wares, they've been with us a long, long time. And he's resting with the Lord now. Um, we want to pray for them, the family, Ware family. Yeah. And uh, I was out there, Blake, were you all out there today? Was, uh, uh, um, Pete, were you there? Yeah, but we couldn't see him because they were going through some tests. I guess they prepared him for the surgery. Well, they, they, he had the surgery. He did. The foot is removed, yeah. They removed the foot and the ankle. They they was um, he, did, he did lose his yeah. foot. Uh, Matthew Hanley, Sister Karen Hanley's husband, that uh, comes uh, here on Sundays. And, uh, but they had to do it, otherwise it was so bad. So let's pray for Matthew Hanley. He's in the room uh, 414 at Blake. Um, there are others that need prayer all over the country, from one end to the other. Families need prayer, people, individuals. Um, there's so many requests, so many needs, uh, so we can just we can just pray. Uh, Sister Bertha uh, called me today. She's here in the, in the study. Your grandson, right, Bertha? Your grandson that we want to pray for tonight. And uh, <coughs> refresh my mind. The, the grandson is where now? Georgia, the state of Georgia. He is in Georgia. Right. Right, and let's pray for the grandson. <coughs> Anyone else with a special need tonight? A special yeah, request? A special. Brother Marlon, pray for a fellow by the name of Stephen Casper up in North Carolina. He's about 38 
years old and he's been heavy on drugs. He's trying to get in church now and he's having a battle. Mm. Stephen Casper. Casper. Casper Stephen Casper. The state of North Carolina. Stephen Casper. All right. We'll zero in on that in our mind, our hearts. And you know, there's such a burden right now for prayer because there's so many that are in need, so many. And I need prayer, and we need prayer. And each one of us needs prayer. Mm -hmm. We really need God to walk with us now, to help us. It's a very serious time. It's far more serious than people. The comedians are going on making jokes on television and Disney World is going around and around, but this is a serious time we're living in. We're living in now, and we need to pray. We need to pray. I, any, I encourage, in fact, I'm going to start saying more about it. I encourage, the, you know, the Catholic uh, Church does something that I honor. They, when they come in to their sanctuary to worship, and a faithful, devoted, and we have some here that can say this is true, they don't speak. They go and kneel down and make the contrition toward Christ and, and the offering of their prayer. Uh, and um, they, uh, I, I, I encourage the church here that we have these altars and even two minutes here before service starts. Two minutes, just walking down, uh, if that's all you have, for five minutes, three minutes. I, I encourage the church to start praying before we enter into worship. Prayer is a foundation. It would help us in our worship. It would draw us closer to Him. I mean, I know everybody wants to say something to each other, but if you put that aside and we went and said a few words to the Lord, wouldn't I, I believe that would help us. Yes. We used to do that. Yes. That used to be kind of standard in the church. We prayed before individually people would come and kneel and pray. Sometimes they'd kneel at their seats. They didn't want to come here, but a moment just silence with God can condition your mind to enter into, into worship. So let's keep that in our hearts. Praise God. Anyone else with a need? I don't know if you know, but she the Chila Cub, she used to go three times a week for dialysis. Chila? Yes, she's on dialysis three times a week, but she's praying to get off from it. And she really loves the Lord. She really has come home. She really is devoted. So Sheila Cobb. All right. Anyone else? Brother really Short. Yeah. I'd like to pray for my son, Christopher. He keeps getting into trouble and he loses his job. His job he loses. He loses. Uh, he's got a good mind, but the devil is leading us astray because he stopped going to church. Now, he used to come to church here. He was baptized at his church. Yeah, I remember Christopher. I sure do. Your son, Christopher. Anyone else for prayer? Anyone else? Anyone else? Sister Arlene? Just remember my family in prayer. Yes, we will. The family. All right. Because they're still going through places, and I know that. Yeah, and there's certain other things going on that I'm just concerned about. Yes. Not to take that burden, but yeah. it does concern me. Yeah. All right, we'll join you in that concern. Okay. Sister Arlene, uh, my brother uh, Ray here, the family, the family. Praise the Lord. Let's remember the two mothers that have gone through this recent loss, Sister Mary Thompson, the loss of Eddie, Gina, Michelle, the loss of uh, Robbie. Robbie and uh, I talked to Gina today and Sister Mary a little bit. I think we helped Gina some. I hope so. She's having a very hard time. The loss of Robbie, and uh, so let's let's pray for these mothers. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Father, we come to thee. Now, Jesus, we come just as we are. 
just as we are, without one plea except the plea to have mercy, to have mercy upon us. And let us rise as the eagle does that we use so much the symbol of, to mount up with those wings you spoke of in the Word of God as eagles, to mount up with wings as eagles. And we know tonight that the wind of the Holy Spirit will help us. It will help lift those wings of promise and hope and resurrection in our life. And we pray tonight as a group, we come together in one mind, in one accord. Lord, we make this an upper room tonight. We pray until we find a chord and we feel the harmony of each other in one mind, in one spirit, in one accord. We come tonight. We come, Lord, and we say to you, we cannot, we cannot make it without you, Lord. We cannot make it without your spirit. We cannot live in this world and have strength and stamina. We cannot live here and have fortitude and courage. We just can't, Lord. We're appealing to you tonight to pour out upon us the blessings of the Lord, to pour out the blessings of heaven. Oh, Jesus, tonight, these requests show the depth of concern among us for loved ones. Uh, these requests that have been spoken shows us the need of families. Uh, they show us, Lord, the need of those on uh, deathbeds in uh, the case of the McCants, Lord. Uh, they show us the concern we should have for Patricia who remains behind after Leroy has been called. Lord, it shows us tonight the need of concern for grandchildren and for sons, Lord, and for every need there is among us tonight, and some not spoken, and there's many needs that are not even made public here tonight, but you search the heart, you know the heart, you know the heart of suffering mothers and the loss of their sons, you know how each one of us reacts and acts according to the weight of sorrow placed upon us. So tonight, Lord, in the words we say, we cannot do anything but ask, and we know it can be given, to seek, and we know we can find, and to knock, and we know it can be opened, and we come with faith and hope in our hearts today. We come with faith and hope. We believe. We are believers. We are believers that Jesus Christ is triumphant in all things, yes. that he is the victor in all things. And we believe that, Lord, we're persuaded that that which we commit unto thee, you're able to keep it unto the very end thereof, fulfilling the promises, knowing that if we commit it to thee, you're able to keep it. And we're committing our hearts and souls and mind and strength here tonight. We're committing every bit of attitude and feeling we have. We're committing, Lord, our spirit to thee. We lay it all on the altar tonight, Jesus. And we know that you can come and you can move. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise your holy name. We will not be defeated. We will not be moved. I shall not be moved. I shall not be. I shall not be moved. My mind is made up. My feet are on the rock, Lord. It is to you I look until the coming, and one day you will come, and I want to be faithful to see that coming. I want to be looking, as you said in the scriptures, but unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. I know you're coming again. 
It could be any day. It could be any hour. Lord Jesus, help me to be ready. Help me not to be in the field bearing my talent. Help me not to be slothful. Help me not to be gazing into the sky without a vision. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, Jesus, I rebuke sin. I rebuke the devil. I rebuke Satan. I rebuke evil. I, the children of God cannot be partakers. They cannot be partakers. Lord, we're sanctified. We're set apart. We are the children of the Most High. We're the children of God. And we pray tonight in the Holy Ghost. We pray in the Holy Ghost. We pray in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise our God. Oh, we love you tonight, Jesus. Oh, we love you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for hearing us, Lord. Thank you for seeing us, Lord. We have no doubt that you see us, you hear us. In Jesus' name, praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I certainly, certainly praise him tonight. And everybody just said, praise the Lord. Everyone just said, praise the Lord. Before we get back into the study of the words of Jesus, and we're going there, as you all know, they've been coming to the Bible studies, we're in the book of Matthew, and we're studying word for word uh, the lessons Jesus gave. And I believe we've progressed in our last studies. Uh, we always uh, have to come back to the exact uh, exact uh, verse. And some of you remember it better than I do. 17 through 25, I believe. And uh, we're going to we'll start... Um, we, we, I think we covered um, down through to verse 26, uh, and uh, we'll start with the verse uh, 27 in a moment. But I wanted to make the, uh, give you these little tidbits so you can make notes. Just you can go ahead and turn and mark your Bible, 527. That's where we're going in a moment, Matthew. But um, I, I like to throw, uh, like I term it a little... Uh, pebbles of truth that you know, somebody might remember or make a note on. Um, one of those tonight I, I selected from my I just have pages and pages and pages of notes I've made through the years and uh, drawer fulls and drawer fulls of them and, but I picked this one out. Um, Matthew 21 and 44 is an interesting verse. Uh, whoso, whoever, rather, Matthew 21 and 44. We're coming back to Matthew 5 and 27, but we'll, I just want to skip over. Matthew 21 and 44. Whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. Uh, so there's quite a contrast, isn't there, <clears throat> on the way the stone falls on us or we fall on the stone. And we know who the stone is. It's very clear through the scriptures that Jesus is the rock. He's the chosen uh, stone. He's the cornerstone. The scripture speaks of Jesus as being the cornerstone. And... Um, you know, he said this right after, in verse 42, he said, Jesus saith unto them, did you never read in the scriptures? And remember, he's speaking to scribes. He's speaking to men that are acquainted with the scriptures. And he's speaking of the law here, because that's what they read, that's what they rehearsed. He said, did you never read in the scriptures? The stone." 
which the builders rejected. See, that's, that's in two places in the Old Testament. 